Hi, everybody, and welcome to this episode of Mind Watch. I am Dan Katz, and I am so excited to be joined today by Ryan Shaw. Thomas is doing some other project right now, so he regrets that he cannot be with us. But Ryan is even better. Well, I don't know about that, but I am very happy to be here and to fill in for Thomas, who is working very, very hard. And uh, he's really sorry he can't be here today. Yeah, Thomas is amazing. And it's really fun to to do these podcasts with Thomas and with Ryan. And I know that you guys know Ryan. He filled in for me uh, on a podcast. I think it was actually the last podcast. And then, of course, we had Ryan for our Movie Mayhem podcast as well uh, for the yes, two-parter. Yeah, that was a lot of fun. That was a lot of fun. It was a lot of fun. And you know what? Today is going to be a lot of fun, too. Yeah. Ryan, tell me about your week. How you been doing? Oh, my week's been going great. Uh, very productive, again. Um, I haven't been as mindful as I should have been, probably. Maybe that'll tie into our topic. Um, but I've been trying to catch up on my meditations. Or not catch up, but trying to uh, maintain. Consistent, right? Right. Maintain the consistency of my meditations. So um, other than that, it's been great. How about, think- how about your week? I, I feel like... I was consistent with my meditation until like today. I think today kind of um, kind of uh, flew past me a little bit. I had just different projects with uh, school, and then all of a sudden it was like, oh gosh, you know, I have all this other stuff to do. So I wasn't as consistent today. I don't think I, um, I don't think I was as organized today as I as I could have been. But. The most important thing is whenever we realize things about ourselves, it's just noticing it, right? It's just mm-hmm. feedback. It's not judgment. That's important. And That's I think that the is. the most important part. I, I agree. I think that is the most important part, you know, as we all try to kind of go through and we all try to make changes and we all try and do better and we, you know, we want to lead a, a more mindful type of existence because we understand the benefits of it. But, you know, at the same time, we've been living for so many years without doing it. And now so we're making changes you know, we're always going to go a little bit forward, a little bit backwards, and that's just what makes us human, right? As yep. our friend Lisa Goodwin says, we are spiritual beings living a human existence. That's right. And, um, you know, even if I couldn't do a full meditation during the week, there you can just take a minute or two out of your day, even if you're sitting in the shower, and just take a deep breath, breathe out, and just try to center yourself, calm yourself, just be in the moment and uh even that helps a little bit you know i think that's important what you just said is really cool because if you're going throughout your day i know there's times that i'll be in my day and you know in addition to mind watch and mindful me i'm also a teacher so i know that when the students leave i literally will take just 30 seconds and just deep breathe you know those cleansing breaths in through your nose and out through your mouth Mm -hmm. just for like 30 seconds And it really is a great way to just like recenter. Yeah, it really helps. Um, I think when we mentioned this, when Thomas and I did the podcast, that um, I don't know if Lisa told me this or if it was somebody else, but there's actually chemicals that are released in your brain when you do that type of breathing that help you to relax. So it's, it's not just a way to calm your mind, but it is an actual physical response within your body that will help you to calm down too. It actually activates what's called the vagus nerve. And the vagus nerve, um, when you deep breathe like that and you cleanse with these cleansing breaths, it activates the vagus nerve, which brings relaxation to the human body. Yes. And and like, for example, I use the, um, the example of the shower and I actually did do that. And I felt the effects right away. Um, you know, it was a situation where I'm just trying to hurry up and finish my shower and just get in and out. And, um, you know, I said, let me just take a minute. And I did that and it was amazing the results. So, and that's just from a one or two minute thing. So that's why it's so important to keep up with your, your meditation schedule as, as best as you can. You know, we all lead very hectic, very distracting lives you know there's there's so much surrounding us especially these days that um that can take up our attention and our time so it's it's even more important that we that we pay attention to that sort of thing 
And those quick breaths, like what you were able to do in the shower or like the breathing that I do in between classes, also has another benefit to it. It helps us to be present in the moment. So it redirects us so that we're not so affected by the past or affected by the future or our brain isn't running 20 miles an hour. It's really good to kind of be in the moment where you're at to appreciate where you're at. Right. right? Eckhart Tolle also talks about the fact that, you know, we can't change the past because it's already in the past and we cannot control the future. The only thing that we can live and control and be with is the present. Right. And if you're always so focused on the past or the future, you're missing where you're at right now. Right. Like one of the, the things I have been discussing with, um, with Lisa actually is, uh, you know, my, my news watching, I've, I've been cutting it down because, you know, it's, the news is obviously very stressful for a lot of people these days. You know, there's a lot going on, which can cause anxiety. And, um, and I'm trying to cut out news altogether, but, um, your, your brain actually craves that kind of stimulation. And I had described it almost as an addiction. I'm like, but I have to know, I have to know. And, uh, and then I thought to myself, do I really have to know? And she made a good point. She says, if it's something really important, somebody's going to tell you. Um, and I thought to myself, well, um, let me just stop watching. And, uh, I felt better within a day I could tell the difference. And, you know, I said to her, I said, if I, if I just stay in the present moment, if I stop thinking about, you know, all the scenarios that could, that could happen in the future or what happened like the day before, Oh my God, you know, all this crazy stuff is going on. The, uh, I boiled it down to the, the one thing that I could control, which is, you know, I can vote. So I'm just focusing on that fact. I'm like, I am going to just cast my vote and hope that it gets counted. And, um, and that kind of put everything in perspective, all the noise and all the tumult and distraction that you, that you get from watching television or reading your, your push notifications or, or watching or reading the news is, um, is exactly that. It's just distraction. And all you can do is focus on what you, you have control of in your, in your life directly. So, you know, that's such great insight. Um, and it kind of brings, brings us to a little bit of what our topic is today. Um, this week, MindWatch or Mindful Me, excuse me, has been really looking at the idea of the fall equinox, right? Ryan did an incredible meditation Oh, it was a, probably a couple, maybe a month or month and a half ago called Autumn. I highly recommend you guys go into our meditation library on mindfulme.org, mindful with two L's. And if you just click on the meditation tab, it'll bring you to our meditation library. And there's one called Autumn that Ryan recorded. It was amazing. Absolutely amazing. So, but that also kind of gave us the idea of what we're kind of looking at this week. So for the fall equinox, it is the time of year where you have equal amount of day and night. It's 12 hours of sunlight and 12 hours of darkness. So we know with the winter solstice, it's the longest night of the year, right? There's more nighttime than there is daytime and things start to move around when it comes to spring and when it comes to summer, but the fall is balance. So it's a great time to kind of take a self checkup and to look at where you're at and to you know, maybe make some changes, but really be able to self-check and see if you're in balance, right? Is are all the aspects of your life in balance or is one part of your life taking over another part of the life? Are we so, you know, consumed with, you know, whether it be school, right? And you're so consumed with that that you tend to not pay as much attention to family or to friends or you're just so focused on your friends that family and other parts of your of your life tend not to be in balance. It's kind of like if you're driving a car and you've got a tire, right? Your tire is perfectly balanced. That's why your car is smooth. But can you imagine if the tire, you know, were higher in one spot and lower in other spots? 
it wouldn't run very well. Yeah, you'd feel like you were in a boat. <laughs> you'd, be, you'd be rocking back and forth down the road. <laughs> yes. Sometimes I do feel like I'm in a boat in my life. And <laughs> I, that's true. But, you know, in the middle of, you know, rough seas and, uh, to use a tired metaphor, but, um, yeah, no, that's true. It's, it's a good idea to kind of take stock or inventory and just, um, take a look at where you're at and where you could be more in balance. And usually if you stop and you're still and you're quote unquote in the moment, you can, you can feel where you're not in balance. If you're really, you know, if you attune yourself to that, you meditate on it or like I said, just be still for a while and really think of everything that's going on in your life. You can, you can start to sense exactly where you might be, you know, there might be some adjustments that need to be made. For now, I'm sorry. No, I was just going to say, maybe you're focusing too much on, maybe you're working too much or, um, studying too much or, uh, you know, you're, you're anxious about something that you don't need to be as anxious about or if that makes any sense. It does actually. And Fernando just released uh, a couple of days ago, right? Today is Thursday when this podcast is released and just four days earlier on Monday, Fernando released an incredible meditation to help you look at all the different areas of your life and to bring balance to it. So a great way to start is that meditation followed up by your autumn meditation that Ryan released about two months ago and you're off to a great start. Yes. But autumn is my favorite time of year. It is a beautiful time of year. It really is. But I, I, I've always liked it because autumn is that time of year where we do get to kind of look and we do get to see what's going on in our world and how can we balance it you know i think another great way to kind of do this self-check or self-evaluation is after you meditate why don't you even journal on it and just let your mind wander in a stream of conscious fashion about all the different areas of your life you know journal about how how great is school going or work how great is family going how great is friends going your your friendships how great uh, you know, might your sports be if you're doing after school sports or something along those lines? And look at all the different areas that you are involved in. Is everything equal? And I think when you stream of conscious means you just don't think about it, you just write. When you're just writing about that, I think it's also a great way to see. If you're talking about you know, uh, your, your friends and your social life and you can go on and on and on and on and on about that and then you talk about family and you've got like you know two sentences that's a good sign the family might be a little out of balance you know maybe there's so much time with social and not enough time with family or vice versa yeah well that's a great idea um, you know I, somebody described it to me as just vomiting on the page and just not worrying about you know grammar or structure just write 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 like you're possessed and then go back and look at it and evaluate what you've written down and it can be very telling um what what's on the page and uh like you said it can give a lot of insight into into what's out of balance in your life um in addition to just being still and and thinking and meditating about it. Um, but I think there's something instinctual too inside of you that, you know, once you've gone through some of these exercises like the writing or the meditating, it will, it will come to you. You will, you will feel it as well. Um, at least that's been my experience. And, you know, your, your ego might fight it and say, no, everything's fine in that area. You know, I do this, I do that. But inside, deep inside, you know that that's not quite the case. So um, your own best judge, right? Right. You really are your own best judge. There's so many different things too, Ryan, on the internet that you know these kind of charts that you can color in and you can kind of see like the balance of all the different areas of your life, and that might be good too. I think that 
in addition to meditation, in addition to stream of conscious writing, that might be like your end result, right? That you can kind of color those in and visually see it because you've done the work to really feel it. But when you stream of conscious write, it's really your subconscious that just kind of takes over. It's all that part inside of you and you just get it out. And I don't know, for me, it is just so, so, so telling. Yeah, and it's it's one of the safest ways to do it. You know, it's it's just you and the page. Nobody's there reading it. Nobody else is going to see it. Um, you know, I went through an exercise similar to this where, you know, it, it wasn't necessarily to take an inventory of where I was out of balance, but it was, you know, to address other things. And after I was done, you know, writing everything down on the page, I actually burned the page. And... Um, just to, to, as a symbolic gesture, just to say, okay, I've identified these areas, I've gotten it out of my system, and now I'm, I'm back to where I need to be, and this is now resolved and gone. That's kind of release, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah, I would, yeah, I think that's a fair statement. That's a, it's a good way to release it. Um, you know, you can kind of imagine, like, all the words just, turning into smoke and, and floating away and uh, dissipating into the air. You know, one of the things I love about podcasts in general is the idea that we can take a topic, we could delve into it. And it's something that you don't want to necessarily do. We have our, our great weekly messages that are on Sunday. But, you know, if you write too much on those, it gets, you know, people don't necessarily want to read it on Twitter or Instagram or any of the other platforms you can find it on. But a podcast really kind of helps you to kind of go in. And, and I think that when we were looking at this topic, Ryan, it was in almost like a, a three-pronged type of approach, right? Through meditation and being still, through stream of conscious writing, through the ability to kind of evaluate more like color coding, right? The different areas of your life. But this is just a suggestion. And I think the most important thing about this topic is use this time of year to just give yourself a mindfulness checkup. Yeah, there's no one right way to do it. It's everyone's their own person. And everyone has their own spirit and, um, and their own struggles and their own issues and their own uh, joys. And coming into balance with that is going to be something that each one of us has to figure out you know, on our own. So whatever method works best for you is going to be the one that, that you're going to use. And if you have a method that isn't one of these, tell us about it. Don't forget to type that into the comments. Send us an email at mindfulme.org, mindful with two L's, and let us know what you think. And maybe that's something that we'll do a podcast on a little later. But in the meantime, don't forget that at Mindful Me, we have a weekly message every single Sunday. This one was about balance. And our meditation on Monday, our meditation with Fernando was about finding balance. And then, of course, a podcast on Thursday. This was Mind Watch. And this is our Finding Balance podcast. And at Mindful Me, we're really trying to open everybody's eyes to new things for just to consider. And if it works, it works for you. And if not, it might be some inspiration to do something and to, to take some different action that really does work well for you. Yes. But I am so grateful, Ryan. Thank you so much for joining me today. It was wonderful to be here. We absolutely As love always. working. Well, we love. I working love with being you. the guest. <laughs> we love it. We love it. We love it, Ryan. You were always incredible with us, and you. As you all know, Ryan is one of our regulars when it comes to our meditation facilitators. So between myself and Thomas and Fernando, you'll always hear one of us on a. Uh, on a meditation. Our next meditation actually is going to be me. So you'll hear me next Monday. And we look forward to um, hearing from you guys. Let us know what things are going well for you. Let us know what things you want us to help you with. Again, Ryan, you have been incredible. This has been Mind Watch, and we'll see you in a couple weeks. And don't forget mindfulme.org, and that's mindful with two L's. Bye, everybody. Bye.